Hi, I'm Leisha Gerbinski. This is Saskatchewan. Every time I pass a semi, I grip my steering wheel just a little bit tighter. You probably do too. Semis tower over my SUV. They often weigh around 50,000 pounds, and at high speeds, their impact could be catastrophic. The slightest error on my part or theirs could be deadly. It's also winter. The highways can be slick. Ice, blowing snow, and long stretches of nothing but road and sky. But there's a storm brewing off the road, too, and it has some drivers in the industry blowing their horns. The Saskatchewan Trucking Association says it is seeing more companies hire independent contractors instead of full-time employees. The business model is called Drivers, Inc., and it works a lot like the gig economy, which you're likely very familiar with. Think of your last Uber driver or your skip-the-dish delivery guy. That person was an independent contractor. That means instead of being hired by the company as an employee with regular hours and pay, possibly benefits like sick leave and a pension, you're called on to do work when it's needed and paid by the job, one gig at a time. So the last semi-driver you passed on the highway? Quite likely a gig worker. The Saskatchewan Trucking Association says it's concerned that this business model is taking advantage of drivers. And the real worry, what does it mean for you and I? and our safety on Saskatchewan highways. Today on the podcast, we take a closer look at a changing trucking industry. Susan Uart is with us. She's Executive Director of the Saskatchewan Trucking Association. Susan, welcome to the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me, Visha. So how did this get on your radar? Well, this has been going on for quite a number of years and like the trucking associations across the country, we've been working with our national association and the federal government to get this like stopped for a long time. Because what happens with Driver Inc. is it's a misclassification of employees under the um, ESDC, under the labor code. And typically what you're seeing is these individuals then are taken advantage of. And a lot of them are new Canadians, new to our country. And, you know, they are, um, you know, not given the same rights that you and I are. There's no CPP, no EI, no taxes paid for them. WCB premiums, like in Saskatchewan, workers' compensation benefits, those aren't paid. And a lot of times these unscrupulous carriers, then they take advantage of these workers. Um, A lot of times they can, we've heard them take their passports away, which is a form of human trafficking that is illegal. Um, they, you know, put pressure on them because they don't know any different to work longer, drive harder, you know, go when they're not supposed to, violate their hours of service. And basically these individuals are then taking, taken advantage of. Uh, sometimes they can even have to end up paying back the uh, carrier as opposed to, you know, being paid because there's, you know, threats and those types of things. So. Really, like in Saskatchewan, we've been working really hard in 2024 with our provincial government because provincial governments have oversight of trucking in each of the provinces because the majority of trucking is federally regulated, which means they leave the borders of Saskatchewan, right? We are an export-based economy. We want to take our goods from this point to the next point. It's in another province. And there's federal regulations that the province is responsible for. So our government in Saskatchewan and the different ministries, we have we've really been working on this with different um, focuses like around immigration, um, around um, SGI and the National Safety Code and how carriers are audited, um, their safety ratings, because a lot of these companies that like prescribe to this Driver Inc. model, they have unsafe equipment, they're not uh, taking care of it properly. Again, they're not providing proper training other than the melt, because we have to have mandatory entry level training. And you you kind of hit it your, the nail on the head when you said, you know, they'll put them in situations like send them out on the highway when the roads you're not supposed to be traveling, right? So there's so, a lot of challenges going on. How did this start? Like, I, I'm curious about the benefits for these companies to do it in this way. And I use that analogy of like, it's like, it's like Uber, right? And so there are, there are cost saving measures for companies rather than playing, paying an employee when they're not working, you just hire them for that specific job, they get it done, they get paid and you save some money. What, what, how, how did this get into the infiltrate into the trucking association? Well, 
a trucking From industry. What I understand, it's been good. It's been going on for a very long time, so probably predating me. So, and like our national association has really been working with CRA. Like we need CRA to enforce the issuance of T4As in our industry, because as like if you paid me earnings, I should have a T4A, which I then declare, right? I pay my taxes, I submit my tax return like everybody else. So what's happening is these trucking companies then who don't have to remit any, so they're not paying the employer portion of the CPP or the EI, and they're not sending in taxes for the deductions that they took off that individual. They're able to undercut rates. And so that, you know, creates issues within the industry. They get ahead, like they should not get ahead because they cheat right? It should be a level business playing field for those who want to operate in the trucking industry. And, um, you know, so this has been going on, like I said, for a long time, lot, lot longer than me. And really, you know, we've been working and working and working, trying to get the federal government, the CRA, to like enforce these issues and start auditing carriers. Um, you know, Saskatchewan is a small province. We're seeing it here too, but Ontario has a huge problem with it. And, you know, you've seen probably some of the news around some of the temporary foreign workers being mistreated. Um, you know, as I mentioned, their passports taken away, asked to do work that they wouldn't normally. They're not entitled to any benefits. They don't, you know, get the mandatory required sick time or time off or vacation pay or any of those things. So what that, is, I mean, what is unique in the trucking industry that makes it ripe for this kind of activity? Like my understanding is that it's been very hard to find people to do the, the driving. Uh, it's an industry yeah. that's been short on workers. There's been recruiting mm -hmm. done in other countries to bring people here to drive mm -hmm. trucks. So what what is it yeah. about this industry that's allowed this kind of activity to flourish? I think some of it has probably, like there's all, it's resources too, right? There is not enough sort of government from regulators oversight of the trucking industry. So they haven't maybe been able to do the job that they would like to do. So sometimes companies just kind of fly under the radar, right? And they skirt away with being able to do some of the, these things. In Saskatchewan, we have a lot of roads. There are, we have more roads than any other province in the country. We have a lot. And so we don't have enough highway patrol or commercial vehicle enforcement officers on the road stopping carriers at like way scales or random roadside checks, those types of things. So we've been maybe a little underfunded in resources. And I always say like, it should not be that easy to get into the trucking industry. Like if you buy a truck and a trailer, that's a huge investment, right? And there are regulations under the national safety code that need to be followed in at um, Saskatchewan, SGI does do a knowledge exam. They do vet a carrier before they are um, set up in Saskatchewan. And that's a lot of the work that we did with SGI back in 2019, because we were trying to stop like what we called chameleon carriers from getting say suspended in Alberta and then moving like province hopping, province shopping, moving to Saskatchewan, because it might be easier to set up a company here. So these carriers get in trouble for like safety violations. They you know, over exceed hours of service all the time. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of things that happen. They don't look after their equipment. I see a lot of brake brake issues. Like we'll see like tickets, right? People not looking after their brakes, and it's a really common thing that a truck driver before he leaves in the morning has to do a pre trip inspection, and they also are required to stop every so often through the national safety coach check on their equipment and make sure everything is working properly. So these these companies that sort of subscribe to this driver Inc model, they are then, you know, basically unscrupulous carriers committing a lot of fraud. We call it fraud. There's so many things that trickle down. It does sound um, like criminal it does sound like criminal activity. Yeah. Some some of it definitely is, absolutely. And then you may have someone that maybe did something. There's a difference between doing something because you genuinely don't know, right? That you it's like, hey, I didn't know that happened. Or you're told the right way, but you continue to do it differently because you figure, oh, that doesn't apply to me. And so we definitely have the ear of our government, especially in Saskatchewan, I have to give them credit, through changes through the immigration um, legislation that came through um, in the fall of this year. So it gave our uh, provincial government more, um, I guess, authority to levy fines and penalties. They're working on a website where if you are fine to be creating, you know, some sort of fraud with your application um, to use sort of the uh, Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program, they're going to name and shame you on a website. They're going to post how much the fine was. 
they can levy criminal charges. There's more oversight today. And has of, has um, some of that happened? Like, have 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 fines been given out? They've been working. Um, I think they're just ready to do that. So I know immigration and career training is what the ministry is called. They've actually got a department now um, that does investigations. So so they've been staffing that up. They have been working on different files, and I think we'll see in 2025 some fines being uh, posted, and we're going to see that website come up, and anybody can look at it. I mean, you can find on the federal government website, how many LMIAs, so labor market impact assessments are issued, which companies they are, whether they've um, been fined or not, like you can see all of that stuff. So the federal government is putting those lists out there. It's not everybody that goes and looks for the, you know, that list sort of thing we do, um, you know, to have a look at that. So, you know, the government of Saskatchewan has taken a very positive step because we, we certainly don't want we, we need people in our province too. We need people to fill jobs. Yes, there's labor shortages in lots of different sectors, but it certainly isn't, I wouldn't want to come here and then be scared, right, all the time because my employer is threatening me. And what a what a bad impression of Saskatchewan and the great people that, that live here, you know, to these individuals by doing these things to them. Yeah, so, I, know, I definitely, yeah. I definitely feel for the people who find themselves working in this industry and who feel caught. Mm-hmm. I'm also mm-hmm. thinking about all of us who are driving on the highways and you haven't left yeah. me feeling very confident that, that things are safe out there. Well, I, I think you have to like, you know, there's a handful of bad apples, right? That always rise to the top and the bad apples gets more attention. To, there are a lot of good companies in our province with good professional drivers. They are skilled and they are knowledgeable and those individuals are out there. So yes, always we should drive with caution around commercial vehicles, especially in the winter time, right? Or any time of the year. So, yeah, I think about the city of Regina and all the snow that we've gotten and the area that we're located in. Um, like it took them a, li- a few days, but they were able to clear the sides of the road because trucks can't maneuver out here. They get stuck easily, right? And so we need to give people more space and to give them a little bit more room. When they've got their signal light, we need to let them in. Um, and, you know, for the most part, carriers are operating safely. That is their goal. They create huge safety cultures within their organizations. And those are important pieces of running a, um, a safe and compliant trucking company. So there are lots of great professional drivers out there who are very skilled and know what they're doing. But the handful of the bad things that are going on are creating a lot of challenges for our industry. What are you expecting in 2025? Are you hoping for improvements? Uh, on this, I mean, you, you said this has been going on for years, but as we come to the end yeah. of 2024, you've put pressure on the government. And as we look ahead to the next year, what are you expecting? I think more enforcement from our perspective. We want to see more enforcement um, as things have ramped up over 2024 and investigations sort of into that, especially on the immigration side, um, to make sure that those carriers that are trying to use immigration to fill labor needs in trucking are doing so as compliant, sort of like that trusted employer that they're vetted better um, and that they're getting and receiving the training and the qualifications that they need. So we're hoping to see more enforcement. Um, You know, we do have conversations continuously with the Ministry of Highways, with SGI, with Immigration and Career Training, with Workers' Compensation. So they're all in the loop. They're sharing information with each other, which is great. We brought them all to the table earlier in 2024 so they could all find out sort of what each other is doing. So we're looking for increased enforcement happening in 2025 and to continue that fight. And then hopefully our federal government hears us to say, look, come on, you need to put a focus on safety because these carriers that are subscribing to the Driver Inc. model need to be cracked down on. And CRA has got the teeth to do this. We just need them to come to the table to do it. Where did that name Drivers Inc. come from? I I really don't know, actually. That's a really good question. Because I, like, I, our association and our board, like, we talk about Driver Inc. because it's an odd term because we talk more about it's fraud in the trucking industry because it's like this huge trickle down effect. If you do one thing, it's easy and you got away with it, you're probably going to do something else. And this is sort of what has happened. It's like a snowball effect. But um, yeah, I don't know who coined the term driver ink. It 
it's been around a long time, so <laughs> I should ask somebody. <laughs> Are there any benefits to drivers who who end up working under this model? Are they bringing in more money? Are there, are there any benefits at all to them as individual drivers? No, no there's not. You know, um, we hear from carriers, sometimes you'll have a driver come and apply at their place of business, and they'll ask them T4 or no T4. Like, so are you issuing me a T4 or not issuing me a T4? And if the carrier says T4, sometimes drivers are like, no, see ya. So again, they're looking to put more money in their pocket, right? To try and skirt those obligations. If you don't issue a T4 for earnings, how is anybody going to track you down? Like, I, I, how else would they do that? So, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's coming from some of the drivers. It comes from some of the carriers. But, you know, our membership base... Um, we're a nonprofit organization. It's voluntary. You don't have to be a member. Of course, we would like to see more members. We do work and advocate for the best business practices and a big, good business environment. We have created great relationships with the government of Saskatchewan. They do listen to what the trucking industry has to say. There's some really good carriers involved in our membership. And, you know, I encourage, like, if people have questions or they want to know things, they certainly can contact us to find out, you know, what's driver ink? Am I doing this wrong? I mean, we're not going to give you legal advice, but we do have information that we can share sort of around um, the different statuses. The owner operator model in trucking is alive and well, and it's a legal and viable way to do things. And that's most trucking companies subscribe to the owner operator model of trucking. So that means Susan owns a truck. I own my truck and I'm going to work for Alicia's trucking company and I'm going to use my truck to haul your trailers and you're going to, you know, deal with your customers, the shippers, and I'm going to go pick things up. That's a, that's a normal model of doing business. There's, um, and that's been going on for, you know, 30 or 40 years, the owner operator. So that's very common that and company drivers. So, you know, I own a fleet of trucks and then I just, I hire the drivers to drive my trucks. And so Drivers Inc., just make that more clear for me. What is the difference then? No, they don't own any equipment at all. So they, they come with a class one license and then they drive your equipment. And under the labor code, that is considered to be an employee because they do not bring their own tools to the job. And then the payment is when things get a bit dicey. That's right. Yep. And so then those carriers are also like not looking at safety issues they're mistreating their drivers um they're usually you know put fear into them about what they can and can't do they usually underpay them you know because the industry is usually paid on a per kilometer basis so there's lots of things that those carriers do to um you know create sort of a, a not a very compliant working environment for that employee and if you have you're new to the company country and someone tells you this is how it is you're probably be like okay i'll just do that right because they want to be here because typically it happens to the, the our, our new canadians our new people that are here what do you want all of us to keep in mind the next time we're heading out on a highway and we pass a semi you know that the trucking industry is very important to the economy of saskatchewan and we call it that uh, supply chain value at peace, that there are lots of great men and women that are working in, this, in the industry that value safety. And, you know, especially during this time of the year, give them a little space on the road. If you need to get past them, make sure it's, you know, you can do so and it's safe to do it and get around them, show them that you're passing, turn your signal lights on, do all those types of things and give them some space. But remember, you know, the majority of those individuals out there are professional drivers and they've been doing this for a long time. And, you know, they want to get home safely at the end of the day to their family too. Susan, thank you for this. Oh, you're welcome.